Today we're going to talk about a plugin for Premiere Pro that will allow you to edit Blackmagic RAW footage right in Premiere with full control of the RAW metadata, and I'll even throw in some grading tips while we're at it. Let's get undone. What's happening everybody, I'm Gerald Undone, and I like big LUTs, and I cannot lie. So as someone who recently acquired the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, which I'm shooting this video on right now by the way, let me know how you think it compares to the GH5 that I used to shoot on. Anyway, I was excited to play around with the new Blackmagic RAW, but I'm still not very fast with DaVinci Resolve yet, so I wanted to see if there was a way that I could edit it in Premiere Pro. And so I discovered this software from Autochroma called B-RAW Studio, which claimed to do that very thing. Now I'm not affiliated with Autochroma or this plugin in any way, but I will put a link in the description in case you want to buy it. It goes for about $30, now I'm not going to make any money on those sales, but I was just really impressed with the plugin and I wanted to share it with you. It pretty much gets everything right except for one tiny little oddity that we'll talk about in a minute. And one last disclaimer before we get into it, this is not supposed to be a competition video about Premiere versus Resolve. I think both programs are great, and obviously this footage was originally intended for Resolve, and I like that program, I'm just not very fast at it yet. But I do think that there are some circumstances in which editing this in Premiere would be useful, and that's the main reason why I'm recommending this. For example, if you wanted to send somebody your Blackmagic RAW footage and they don't use Resolve, but they're like really fast with Premiere, this would be great. Or if you receive Blackmagic RAW footage from somebody else and you've never used Resolve, you only use Premiere. Or if you just have a complete project built out in Premiere and you just wanted to use a small clip from Blackmagic RAW, these are all great uses that you could use this plugin for. All right, so let me show you how it works. I have it set up in a way here where I have my scopes on the left hand side, my timeline down here, obviously I can see the footage, and then I have the Lumetri panel on top and the effect controls on the bottom. And this is convenient and I'll show you why. So when I select a clip here and I click on it, Normally how you would do with Premiere is you'd see over here you have your effects on this side, including the Lumetrio, which I'm going to hide for now. But if you click on Master now, so that's Master for the entire shot, not just the clip that you might have extracted with your in and out points. When you click on that, you're going to see B-RAW Studio Source Settings, because that's affecting the entire source file, not just the clip. And here is where the Settings and License button is, that's where you're going to click that and put in your, your license that you get online to register it. But anyway, you have a few different options here for decode using, if you set it to B-RAW default, that's going to use the default settings for the RAW, completely ignoring whatever settings you put into the camera. And then if you choose camera metadata, that's going to choose what ISO and white balance, etc. that you set when you took the shot. But because this is RAW, you can actually choose clip and then change the ISO and the white balance non-destructively in post. So with this shot here, we can see that it's set to ISO 3200. This is the only part that I've noticed any bugs with this uh, interface so far. And that's when you actually click on the ISO and you go to change it. It's not going to do it now because we're already on 3200, so say I chose 2000, it changed fine. But if the ISO is higher than 3200, like say 6400 in this case, and say I clicked on it and I wanted to change it to 4000, look what happens. It just jumps to 3200. It's weird, and it only does it the first time. Now if I chose 3200 and now I chose 4000, it's fine. But that first time changing the ISO, if you don't change it to the native one, it kind of bugs out. And you have to do that for every clip. So for example, if I jump to a new clip like this one, which is set to 6400 and I change it to 1600, see how it went to 3200? But now I can change it to 1600. So the first time that you edit a clip, the ISO seems to be buggy and then it works on the second try. So just something to be aware of so that you make sure that your ISO, you didn't think that you clicked it and looked away and that it wasn't actually set to something else. And if the software developers are watching this, maybe you can see what's causing that and see if you can fix it. Anyway, so the great part about this though, basically with the RAW, is the fact that we can change our ISO in post and we can also change our white balance. And so for this clip here, for instance, see how it says white balance controls, you can do as shot or you can do any of the you know presets. But you can also choose custom and then dial in your color temperature and your tint. And again, this is all completely non-destructive. And there's also the highlight recovery option, which you would find in DaVinci Resolve, is also available here in the Premiere Pro plugin, and it works really well. I'm going to show you some practical examples in just two seconds here. And then lastly, your gamma, you can choose film, video, or extended video, which are the options available on the Blackmagic. And then they also have some other conversions here. And you can go in further with a custom gamma, and you could change the gamma controls if you wanted to affect your saturation contrast midpoint of how the gamma would be recorded without using one of the presets. Now I want to do an example using a clip that has a significant range to show here. And I'm going to use this one, which is funny, this was in the previous video that I posted yesterday showing this stuff. And there's a lot of comments about the highlights being blown out. And you guys, a couple of you were going crazy with the highlights, thinking that there was something wrong with the camera. 
There's not. It was an artistic choice because when I bring the highlights in to show the sky, it was a lot darker than it was on the day, so I made it nice and bright. And I'm going to show you, though, that the, all that information is there in the camera, and you can do whatever you want, even in post. Now, in order to better demonstrate this, I'm actually going to add a LUT so that we can kind of see what we're talking about better than just flat, raw image. And to do this, I'm going to use the Leaming LUT because I highly recommend using this one. I obviously have recommended them in the past for, you know, Sony and GH5 and that kind of thing, but I got the Blackmagic one, and it works great as well. So again, still recommended. So I'm just going to turn that on, and you can see it's like one-stop shop. You just put that LUT on, and you already got a usable image. So good job, Paul. And then uh, there's nothing really done to affect this image other than that, but this will give us enough to see what the other effects are doing when we change the raw stuff. And as you can see, it's quick and easy to change back because now when I click on the master tab again with the way that I have this workspace set up, it's going to immediately show the source monitor again up here and not the lumetri panel because we don't really want to be changing both things at the same time, but we'd rather be able to see our before and after and then still have that big center screen here where we can see like the finished image basically. All right, so now let's say that we wanted to fine tune our exposure. We've got the scopes on the side and we've got our image here in the middle. And this is the one that everybody's freaking out about because the highlights were so high. So let's say we wanted to turn them down. So we can go all the way down to 1250 and as you can see, pretty much all the information that was in the sky, except for the sun, which is obviously blown out no matter what we did, we can bring that all back. And the reason why you can't set the ISO, in case you didn't know how the uh, black magic works, below 1250 is because there's two amplifiers, basically, two sets of ISO in different gain brackets. One goes from 100 up to 1000, one goes from 1250 up to 6400. And so you can change in post anything within that one converter, but you can't switch to another converter in post. So if you just think to yourself, am I gonna to wanna to use the low gain or the high gain, and then know that you'll have freedom within those two things of changing, but you can't cross over. So the lowest we can go in this case is 1250. Now there's also that other option here I was talking about, which is called highlight recovery. I think this is better demonstrated a little bit higher ISO, but if we check it off here, you can see, look at that. Look what it just did. It brought all of that color and sun and richness and everything back. If we uncheck that, it has that kind of hazy, improper exposure kind of thing. But just look how great that highlight recovery option is. It's so good. And then we can actually increase the exposure again if we wanted it brighter like I did on the day. We go up to 2500 and we're still preserving those details. As we can see over here on the scopes, it's only that brightest sun that's actually clipping. We could probably even move it up to 3200 and we're still under the 100% marker there, probably all the way up to about 4,000 is when, you know, it reaches probably the upper limit. Anything beyond that, you're gonna add more to the clipping. So you actually have all the detail there and it's just a brighter environment where if you did this on another camera that wasn't, you know, doing the raw and post, obviously there's gonna be a lot harder limits on that. You're not gonna have that awesome highlight recovery thing. Now there's also this exposure control here and I have a note about that exposure control versus the exposure control in Lumetri. This one is much better. And I'm gonna show you this by doing a clip that I did of myself earlier, which you can also use as a comparison of the GH5 in this exact setup versus the Black Magic. Okay, so here's that clip of me that I was talking about. This was shot on the Black Magic. And if we look at the master here, you can see that I had it set to 1000 ISO, but I wanted to brighten it up a little bit more. And obviously I can't increase the ISO past 1000 because I can't switch over to that other converter, that other amplifier in post. So you have the option of either increasing the exposure here or increasing it in Lumetri. So this is what it looks like when we increase it in the exposure part of the Blackmagic RAW plugin. Now conversely, let me show you what it looks like if we increase it using Lumetri. So I'm gonna reset that back to zero, and then I'll jump over to Lumetri and set this to, I guess 1.4 would be the equivalent. Now if I just jump back and forth in the history here, you should be able to see the differences. So this is the Blackmagic RAW exposure, Lumetri exposure, Blackmagic RAW exposure, Lumetri exposure. In my opinion, it has that same hazy, levelly, weird problem where some of the skin's kind of flat and some of the, it's almost like it doesn't feel like light. It feels like you're just sort of jacking up the highlights in a weird way, where the uh, Blackmagic Raw exposure actually looks like more light was shown on the subject. And so it's a much nicer effect and it's great that that's included and I would highly recommend doing your exposure there, not even bother with it with Lumetri. Now using these examples of me, I'm going to talk a little bit about the white balance and how that's convenient as well. So let's say that you shot using the way that you would have to do with a lot of other cameras where you set your white balance and then maybe you weren't quite happy with it in post when you looked at it. Well, maybe you would normally go into Lumetri here like I have for this example, maybe cool it off a little bit or add a little bit of the magenta uh, tint to take away from the green. That's common that you would do that with the GH5. 
And uh, so you'd get an image that you thought you were happy with in the end. Well, with the white balance customization, you don't even have to do that. So if I jump over to this shot, which by the way is shot at a different T-stop, so it's definitely softer and I, I'm not even focused on myself, but ignore that, let's just talk about the color. You can see that the color is actually pretty close, but if we look at the clip over here, there's no white balance adjustments made. And that's because if I click on master, we're going to see the raw, and you can see I've done the adjustments down here by shifting the color temperature down to 4700 and the tint up to 22. And the best part about that is once you sort of fine tune in post to what you like, because obviously you can really take your time with it when you finish your grade and set the white balance to make a match everything, just really, really enjoy what you have, then you can just record those numbers in your, in your brain, 4722, and then you can go into the camera and punch them in on a custom white balance. And so now you've basically did the white balance in reverse rather than doing it in camera, you did it in post and put it into your camera. It's really, really cool. And you can still change it again afterwards. The next time that you record, if you decide you don't like that, you still have non-destructive ability to change it as much as you want. But it's neat how you can tweak it in post and then put it back into the camera because both of these are using the same Blackmagic RAW metadata language. Also, another quick advantage while I have these two shots up is the benefit of the 12-bit RAW because often people ask, will you really see a difference with the extra bit depth? You can definitely see it here in these shots. If you look at the GH5 footage, look at the banding in the background around the lights. And now let's jump over to the Blackmagic RAW, no banding at all, despite the exposure actually being increased higher and probably being pushed a little bit further. There's the banding is completely gone. So that would be one benefit. Now there may not be a lot of it in this shot and maybe it's not that big of a deal, but depending on the circumstances that can actually add up to be quite a significant improvement. Okay, now let's work on a different clip and I'll give you sort of a whole outline of my process of dealing with the RAW and then mixing it in with Lumetri and Premiere Pro. Now the first thing I like to do is apply a LUT to it because I shoot these things with a preview LUT on the Blackmagic so I know what I'm, you know, trying to accomplish. And it's a lot easier to figure out how you want to set things when you already have your LUT on the screen. So we're going to jump over here to the test shots on the Lumetri color panel here and I'm just going to turn that LUT back on that I was using from Leaming LUT Pro. And again, it does a lot of the work for us, which is great. Now I'm going to click on Master, and that's going to bring up the raw stuff here, and I'm going to use this to tune the parts of the image that are non-destructive that I want to do first before I even go into the Lumetri to apply any kind of grade. And so I'm going to brighten this one up because I find it looks a little bit dull. So we're at 1600 now, so let's jump up to say 3200. We have a little bit of stuff that's clipped up here, but it looks like it was clipped when we shot it. Let's drop all the way back down to 1250. And yeah, we have a solid white bar on the scope. So this is out of range from the get-go. So we can still brighten up the rest of the image and we're not really about losing anything else. But we'll check off the highlight recovery box and look, it brought back that stuff up there that we had a problem with. That highlight recovery thing is outstanding. Now we're gonna jump down here to the white balance section. And if there was anything that we didn't like, like say maybe it was like, oh, that's, I'll give you an example. Cause you can obviously change this to taste afterwards too. So let's say that you shot it extremely warm, like 8,000 Kelvin. And then you looked at this now with the LUT on, you're like, oh, wow, that's that's way warmer than I want. Well, now obviously you can make some adjustments in post and they're non-destructive, so that's great. So I just did that randomly, it was like 5,300, sure. Maybe we want a little bit warmer because maybe we want to give that warmer kind of sun vibe. So we'll do 5,200 and we'll leave it like that. And now you can evaluate whether you find it too green or too magenta. And maybe you think that the sky is a bit too green or maybe you think this log is too magenta. So you decide that you're gonna bring it down to 20. You're like, oh no, that's too green. You know, 25 there. Okay, so now we're, we're happy with the white balance. And so now we've actually done a large portion of our color correction right here before we even move into the Lumetri panel. Now all we have to do is click on the shot again, the individual shot, not the master, and then we can click on Lumetri, and now we're affecting just that clip with the Lumetri color panel. So if I adjust the white balance here, as we can see, it's working now. And like I said, I wouldn't do exposure here, just move right past that. If you wanted to go back and do an exposure adjustment, do it back in the raw panel. But maybe you like more contrast, so you wanted to increase the contrast quite a bit, and maybe you wanted to bump the shadows a little bit. So there, you can do that. And saturation control, sometimes I, I think that the, the shots come out a little bit too saturated, so I'm gonna drop that down to 93. And it's that easy. Basically, like, obviously you can do whatever you want now. You could apply a grade, you could, you know, put a vignette or fade film, put some sort of grain on it. Whatever else you wanna do at this point is up to you. But you can see it's actually incredibly easy, this combination of Blackmagic RAW mixed with the Leaming LUT mixed with very simple Lumetri controls. And the end result usually comes out pretty close to what you would get from DaVinci Resolve, which I can show you for a little bit of a comparison here. So I'm going to pop open Resolve now, just so you, in case you're worried that you're losing out if you do it in Premiere instead of Resolve. Okay, so that shot of the log was 44, so I'm just going to drag that here into Resolve. 
and great, we'll just go from this little segment here. Now, if I click on that and I open up the color panel, we have the same camera raw settings down here and it's the exact same thing. So we can use clip, so 3200, and then the color temperature was 5200 and 25. And then we applied the leaming LUT. So we'll just click on LUTs and I have it in my favorites here. So double click on that. So the leaming LUT is applied. And next up, we lowered the saturation a little bit. So let's, I don't know, bump this down to say 45 and maybe a little bit lower. Let's go 42. And then we just added some contrast, which I don't really like the contrast tools in here. So maybe I'll just do a little bit of a curve. I'll just bring this, this bottom one in and we can put a couple quick little points on the S curve here. And we also use the highlight recovery in the raw. I'm just remembering now, so we'll check that off. Okay, so I just did something quick like that. Let's jump over to Premiere and take a look. And I think you can see it's actually pretty close already with just that little bit of work. Now, obviously the shot isn't at the exact same point, I think. But anyway, you can see the shots are really, really similar. Obviously, Resolve works great for this. That's what it was intended to do. But you're not really losing anything by doing it in Premiere. And uh, I'm really, really happy with how this plugin works, except for that one little bug where you have to choose the ISO twice sometimes. But it's neat how you can tweak it in post and then put it back because this is all using the same, you know, metadata is all using the same black magic raw metadata metadanga because both of these are using the same metadata interfaces are using the same metadata these are using the same metadata made it metadanga metadanga I, don't know, I can't say that but I hope you found this one helpful or at least entertaining and if you did make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already but if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining feel free to hit the dislike button twice. All right, I'm done.